Hello and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. What is Mailbag? Well, Mailbag is a feature of the channel where you guys leave lots of comments on the channel and I attempt to answer those comments or if I can't answer those comments, I throw it out to you guys who have more knowledge on some of this stuff than I do. So, let's get into the first Mailbag of this session. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next comment or question comes from XP50 player. In response to the Oberheim apology and Anderton gets a UBXA rant I did in May 2022. Uh, XP50 player writes, the OBX8 has discrete oscillator and filter circuits, so some cost justification there. The UBXA hasn't been shown to be any kind of resonant, reasonable facsimile for any of the historic models represented by the OBX8. I would expect Oberheim has made the price calculation by analysing new sales data over the past few years. The OBX8 looks like an instant collect keyboard to me, although too rich for my blood. Now, as you say um, in, the, in the comment there, you say some but potentially not a lot of cost justification for that area. I would agree that maybe collectors might jump in and buy this synth. But there is no demand that this is a very capable unit. I've never said the OBXA is not capable. The question has always been, for me personally, is it capable and versatile enough to justify that cost price point? And for me, the answer is no. But many others, as have other questions that have gone through, have a very, very different viewpoint to the one I have. The next comment or question that comes from uh, Gary M and it's in response to installing more memory and uh, a new battery on your Korg Oasis, a video I did in July 2018, good god, four or five years ago, good. Um, and Gary writes, thanks for the input on how to replace the battery. So I have eight buttons at the bottom of the screen, that are not, some of which are not working. Hoping I can clean them with, uh, when I put in new battery, well, hoping I can clean them when I put the new battery in. Um, that fan far right next to the buttons properly blowing dust on them. I've also uh, some of the red buttons on the right side of the screen. Some of the program buttons is like function very dim Guess I will have to get under the board and make sure I have the right light. Uh, check the voltage and see what's up, or maybe just let it slide. Don't want to get out of my comfort zone. Um, thanks ever so much. Where is the battery? I'll hang on to your site. Uh, I just got an M Sonic Mirage keyboard and I want to give it a uh, to an up and coming kid who just graduated high school and is doing very good things. I want to upgrade this keyboard. I know it needs a new belt drive for the disk drive and a new battery is required in it, but I have done that before. Thanks, good video. Um, I think if I remember correctly, uh, this was converted from another language, hence the reason why it seems a little bit bitty. Um, but um, one of the things I will say about the Korg Oasis is you will never regret putting your Oasis back to rude health. Okay, it is a fantastic keyboard. Um, you know, if you think about the lineage of where the Oasis comes from, the Oasis is an absolutely fantastic keyboard. It is not as functional as the Kronos, it is not as functional as a Nautilus. Nautilus. But if you can get your hands on one and they still hold their value, you know, a good Korg Oasis will set you back. An 88 key version of good Korg Oasis is still going to set you back the better part of $2,500 stroke pounds. 
Okay, they are holding their premium. I mean, they were eight grand brand new um, when they came along, but even here we are, they were, they were discontinued in 2010, 13, 14 years later, if you can get your hands on a Corgo Oasis, you are still going to pay a premium price for it um, because they are such sought after machines. So bringing a Corgo Oasis back to Rude House, you will never regret doing that. Yes, it may take some time and effort. Um, <clears throat> now, as you say, the pads under, underneath the, the screen, so there are a series of eight pads underneath the screen, um, Yes, you can get dust in between the contacts, but I would be careful uh, when you're taking it to pieces. Just make sure when you're taking it to pieces, if it looks dirty, obviously clean it. If it doesn't look dirty, look at the contacts themselves. That's probably what I would say. And you might just need to reseat the connectors there um, just to make sure that they are properly connecting. The thing about the pads is the pads tend to take a little bit of abuse given the nature of the fact that it is a pad and people tend to thump them. Um, so it is possible that the switches underneath the pad probably need replacing if they've had a bit of abuse in the past. So that's where I think uh, I'd look at that. In terms of the LEDs, um, I've got to be honest and say I have never looked at the circuit diagram for the LEDs. And I'll tell you the reason why, because none of my LEDs are broken, so I haven't had to fix them. So. But I do think that you are right, you probably need to look at the voltages uh, going to the LEDs just to make sure you haven't got a problem. Uh, and if you have, it's possible that you've got a blown LED. Um, I do not know how easy or hard it is to change the LED, so I do apologise. I can't really answer that question. I haven't done the work myself. But, um, you know, your starting point is a good starting point. It's probably where I would start as well. Now. Moving on to uh, the Mirage. Now, I don't have a Mirage. I have an Ensonic EPS-16. I have an SQ-2 from the Ensonic ranges um, in my collection. I'm still on the fence with the SQ-2. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to keep it. I keep saying that. I've had it for two years. I haven't really done anything with it. Um, and I'm sort of kind of still in that, mm, do I, don't I? Um, restore it and sell it or do I don't I restore it and keep it I really don't so I'm afraid I can't help you with the Mirage question per se um, but the first thing I would do and I do this from whenever I acquire a new keyboard is I acquire the service manual I go searching for the service manual now the problem with the Ensonic stuff is that it is particularly difficult to get a service manual that actually tells you anything useful um, and I don't know why that is, because you can get service manuals for Yamaha products, you can get service manuals for Core products, you can get service manuals for Roland products, you can get service manuals for a whole raft of uh, other manufacturers, but the Ensonic service manuals are particularly poor, or the ones that I've seen are particularly poor compared with the, the other service manuals that you can find. Now, whether that's because Ensonic had a very compressed service base i don't know i don't know what the answer is but i can tell you now that the service manual for the eps 16 that i've got is rubbish <laughs> um <clears throat> so uh, i do apologize but i would go searching for a mirage ser service manual if you can go and get one and that will probably be your best bet to give you an inkling of what is going on on the mirage Thank you.